In this tutorial, we're going to look at how we can use graphical techniques to solve simultaneous equations. Now, if you recall from the algebra topic, we looked at two methods, substitution and elimination, which can be used to solve simultaneous equations. And now we're going to look at graphical methods. Now for consistency, I'm going to use some of the same sets of simultaneous equations as we used in the algebra topic. The reason for this is because we would always expect to achieve the same results, irrespective of the methods used. So in the examples from the algebra topic, we did 5x plus 3y equals 51. And our second equation, we did 2x minus 3y equals minus 2. And if you recall, one of the things we said that was true for simultaneous equations is there will be a unique pairing of x and y coordinates that make equation 1 true, but the same pair of x and y coordinates will also make equation 2 true. So the values for x and y that make equation 1 true are the same pair of x and y values that make equation 2 true. Now when we solve these graphically, the first thing we have to do is to rearrange each of these equations to make y the subject so that we have something we can plot. So if we do equation 1 first of all, and we're going to make y the subject, the first thing we're going to need to do to make y the subject is we're going to have to subtract 5x from each side. Subtracting 5x from each side, we get 3y equals 51 minus 5x. And the second thing we're going to need to do is divide each side by 3, because at the moment we've got 3 lots of y, and we just want 1 lot of y. So y is going to become 51 over 3 minus 5 over 3x. You see, what we can do is divide the coefficient of x by 3. And I'm going to express each of those in a slightly different form. 51 divided by 3 is 17. And 5 divided by 3 is 1.6 recurring. That's our first equation. Our second equation, rearranging for y, we start with 2x minus 3y equals minus 2. The first thing I need to do is to minus 2x from each side. So I get minus 3y equals minus 2 minus 2x. Now because all of these terms are negative, I'm going to change the sign of each side, or times each side by minus 1. It's essentially the same thing. Providing I change the sign of each of the terms in that equation, that is a valid operation. So changing the sign, and that minus there is going to become a plus. Changing the sign gives me 3y. Minus 3y becomes 3y. Minus 2 becomes 2 and minus 2x becomes plus 2x. And then finally, dividing each side by 3, I get y equals 2 thirds plus 2 thirds x. Or expressing each of those as a decimal, I get y equals 0 0.6 recurring plus 0 0.6 recurring x. Now those are the two equations that I'm going to plot. Equation 3 down here, and equation 4 here. And where those two equations cross, or where the lines for those two equations cross, will give me my unique values for x and y that make equation 1 true, and x and y that make equation 2 true. So in this view, I've noted down the two equations that we need to plot up in the top left hand corner. So we've got y subscript 3, which is equation 3, and that was 2 thirds plus 2 thirds x. And I've also got y subscript 4, which is y for equation 4, and that was 17 minus 5 thirds x. Now, if you were to do these manually, what you would do for each of those values of x is you would input the value of x into the equation and calculate the value for y. So when x equals 0, y for equation 3 would become 2 thirds plus 2 thirds times 0, which is just 2 thirds. If we take another example, let's say x equals 10, and we want the y value for equation 4, which would go down here, we would do 17 minus 5 over 3 times 10 to input that value. 
Now just to speed the process up a little bit, I'm going to use formula functions in Excel to get our Y values for each of these corresponding X values. So in this cell here, I'm going to input equation 3 for Y. So I need to input 2 thirds plus 2 thirds times the X value. So all formulas start with equals. We've got 2 thirds plus 2 thirds. Now times on Excel is the star and I need to select the cell which has the X coordinate in there and we can see that that's going to be A5. So we need to select cell A5. Hit enter and that's our formula inputted. I'm going to input my formula for equation 4 into this cell here. Again we start with equals 17 minus 5 thirds times the cell containing x which as we said previously is a 5. Hit enter and now that formula has been inputted into there. What I need to do is copy that formula down for all of those values of x. So I'm going to copy that formula in all of the cells in that column. I'm going to do exactly the same for the formula in this box. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it in all cells in the column beneath. And there I have the x and y coordinates that I need to plot for this particular graph. So now we're in a position where we can plot these two sets of data. So first of all, we have x coordinates ranging from 0 to 10. So 0 will be in line with our y axis. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. As I mentioned in a previous tutorial, you want to try to maximise the space on these axes as far as possible. Now if I'm going to plot both of these, equation 3 and equation 4 on the same set of axes, then the highest value I have for y is 17. That means my y axis needs to go up to 17. So I'm going to need to use a different scale on my y-axis. I'm going to have to go up in twos. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on, all the way to the top of my axes. Now I can start plotting my data. So I'm going to plot all of the data for equation 3. So I'm going to be plotting these x-coordinates against these y-coordinates first. When x equals 0, y equals 2 thirds. Well, two-thirds is going to be somewhere around there. When x equals one, y equals one and a third. When x equals two, y equals two. I've got three and two and two-thirds. Four and three and a third. Five and four. Six and four and two-thirds. Seven and five and a third. 8 and 6, 9 and 6 and 2 thirds, 10 and 7 and a third. So that's my first set of data plotted on the axes. I then have a second set of data. This time I'm plotting my x coordinates against the y coordinates for equation 4. So I have 0 and 17. I have 1 and 15 and a third. I have 2 and 13 and 2 thirds. 3 and 12. 4 and 10 and a third. 5 and 8 and 2 thirds. 6 and 7. 7 and 5 and a third. Now we notice here that the two lines cross at 7 and 5 and a third. And we can check that on our table of data here because when x equals 7, the y variable for both of those equations equals 5 and a third. 
I'm going to plot the line using the data I've got there. There's no need for me to carry on plotting any more points for that data. And we can conclude now that our two coordinates are x equals 7, y equals 5 and a third. And those were the solutions that we got when we used both elimination and substitution.